Hello everyone and welcome to my channel Be Yourself. This is Dr. Rajni Sharma and today I will deal with nucleus. In my last video, I have discussed about the plasma membrane which is the outermost layer of the cell. Now this time, I have focused towards the center of the cell which is nucleus. In this video, I will explain very briefly about the structure of nucleus, what are the components of the nucleus and I will much focus over the transportation across the nucleus. Actually, inside the nucleus, there are certain processes which took place like DNA replication and all whose requirements or the basic necessities are synthesized in the cytoplasm. Then, how these requirements are the protein which is required for the replication process which include DNA polymerase and all get imported inside the nucleus. I will discuss about this in this video. So let's start. Nucleus is a membrane enclosed organelle found in eukaryotic cells. RBCs is an exception which do not have nucleus. Actually when the RBCs is newly synthesized it contains nucleus but on maturation it lost the nucleus. This is helpful in, uh, full in RBCs for uh, its oxygen carrying capacity. It increases the space for this activity. Some eukaryotic organelles can have more than one nucleus. Now I come to the structure of the nucleus. Nucleus is a double membrane bound structure which is connected with that of the endoplasmic reticulum. And like endoplasmic reticulum, the surface of some of nucleus sometimes contain ribosomes. And we know that ribosome containing nucleus is this as the rough endoplasmic reticulum, and that which don't have ribosome is the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. This uh, connection between the nuclear outer membrane and the endoplasmic reticulum connects it with the outside of the cell. Now the main point with about the transportation. The small molecules can easily pass through the nucleus but the basic requirement which is the micromolecules proteins uh, need to be transported across the nucleus is only uh, specific due to the presence of nuclear pore. This nuclear pore provides the passage across the nucleus but that's too very regulated. The nucleus is also supported by nuclear lamina. Nuclear lamina is a cytoskeleton which provides structure and shape to any of the particular body. And here nuclear lamina is a cytoskeleton which is providing a structure as well as shape to the nucleus. Nucleus contains chromatin which condenses during the meiosis and this structure is known as chromosomes which contain our hereditary material. Another important organelle inside the nucleus is the nucleolus. It is the synthesis site for the ribosomal RNA. Now I will discuss about the whole of this component of nucleus one by one very briefly. First start with the nuclear lamina. Nuclear lamina is composed of 60 to 80 kilodalton fibrous protein called lamines. Lamins is a class of intermediate filament protein which is coded by three genes A, B and C. Like other intermediate filaments, it also associates with others to form higher order structures. How it gets recognized? This is the single unit of lamins which for dimerize and form coiled coil structure. Now this coiled coil structure undergo head to tail association as shown here. Here you can see that this head portion get associated with the tail and then again head, tail, head, tail. So this association is known as head to tail association. Once it has associated like this, then in the second stage, it will undergo side by side association and it will form a complex structure called the nuclear lamina. This uh, nuclear lamina get modified during the post translation modification so that it can specifically associate with the inner plasma membrane of the nucleus 
and this is uh, due to the prenylation at the C terminal of the cysteine in case of lamines. This is the detailed structure of the nuclear pore complex. It's uh, very complex. It looks very complex. I have just shown here the half portion of the nuclear complex. This, nucle this is the nuclear lamines which is associated with the membrane of nucleus with the help of lamin B receptor and emerging. Nuclear lamine not only uh, associate with the nuclear membrane but it also associate with the chromatins with the help of certain histone proteins specifically histone 2A and 2B. Many nuclear proteins involved in DNA synthesis, transcription or chromatin modifications are known to bind with lamine. But why it exactly bind with the lamine? What is the significance of this is still unknown. Now transportation across the nuclear membrane which I am going to focus in this video. It is not problem the small molecules can easily pass across the nuclear membrane. But what about the large molecules which includes histones, DNA polymerases, RNA polymerases and many more. These macromolecules has certain sequences, very specific consequent sequences and it is specific for the specific proteins. Uh, this is known as nuclear localization signals. The name itself suggests that it will localize this protein towards the nucleus. This was first mapped by Alan Smith and colleagues in, in 1984 in the T antigen of SB40 virus, simian virus. Uh, now nuclear localization, localization uh, signals. I have noted some of the sequence here. In the T antigens, it was seen that it has a sequence of proline, lysine, lysine, repetition of 3 lysine, then again arginine, lysine and valine. But sometimes here you will see that if this sequence will be there, then this is known as nuclear localization signals and this protein will be transported to the nucleus. But sometimes this analysis is not in a continuous fashion, rather it get interrupted with some of the other amino acid. For example, in case of nucleoplasmin, there is a sequence of lysine arginine followed by the 10 amino acid and then again this will be the analysis sequence. So such type of analysis is known as bipartite. Now, uh, how this analysis is recognized, how it is decided where it has to pass, uh, imported or exported. This uh, is functioned by a special type of protein known as nuclear transporter uh, transport receptors. It belongs to the uh, cardioferrins protein family. It is responsible for both import as well as export of the uh, protein across the nuclear pore. Here I have listed some of the cardioferrins with their known substrate like uh, which uh, function as either import protein or export protein like Kalpa uh, alpha beta trimer which particularly recognize the analyst sequence in the nucleoplasmin and there is NERP protein Kappa beta 1 which will recognize the substrate of SNRNPs which is U1, U2, U4. If you will remember my videos of the uh, DNA repair, you will get this protein there. there that, this protein function on that time. Not only in import, it also function in the exportation of certain proteins from the nucleus towards the cytoplasm. And this also function very systematically. So let's see how it function. Now how this RAN protein uh, regulate the movement across the nuclear pores. RAN is a GTP bond protein which, uh, ha which uh, assist in the transportation across the nuclear pore with having different concentration of its bond with the GTP molecule, GTP and ATP molecules. In the case of uh, cytoplasm, it has higher concentration of RAN GTP and the nucleoplasm contains higher amount of RAN GTP. 
this is regulated with the help of another protein which is the RAN GTPKs activating protein also known as uh, RAN GAP which is present in the cytoplasm and another is the RAN guanine nucleotide exchange factor or GEF factor GEF which is present in the nucleoplasm and how this function what happened RAN GTPKs activating proteins will uh, uh, will have the activity to hydrolyze RAN GTP, G, GTP to GDP. Why? Similarly, in case of nucleoplasm, there is uh, the RAN guanine ex nucleotide exchange factor will change the RAN GT, GDP into GTP. Here you have seen this. Here was GDP and here is converted into GTP with the help of uh, RAN guanine nucleotide exchange factor. Because of this reason, the higher concentration of RAN which is bonded to GTP is high in the nucleus. Then what is the significance of this unequal distribution of GTP and G GTP? The significance is that it helps in the transportation of the material across the nucleus. How? Let's see. I already have represented that this was the nuclear uh, analysis uh, sequence as recognized by its receptor and now what will happen it will transport the protein across the nucleus now when it has uh, had has come towards the nucleoplasm here it will interact with the ren guanine exchange factor and what will happen it will convert it into uh, GTP it will, will be, uh, be exchanged to GTP because of this for condition its conformational will change and it will relieve the protein and now the protein from the cytoplasm has come to the nucleoplasm and from here it is again transported back to the cytoplasm this receptor will again back to the cytoplasm and it will again be recycled now when it has arrived to the outer membrane of the nuclear pore complex i have told that there is present of ran gtps activating protein which is present in the outer lamina of the nuclear pore complex and here this will again hydrolyze the receptor from gtp which is the ran which was the ran gdp it will hydrolyze it to ran GDP. Now this can again be used in the transportation. Same process continues in the export of the protein that is from the inside of the nucleus to the outside. Only difference is that here uh, the RAN GDP has bound to the protein in outside the cell and this time this RAN GTP will be present in the nucleoplasm as RAN G. TP and in the similar manner it will not go along uh, by relieving the protein rather it will carry the protein outside the cell and in the same manner it will again be converted into GDP and again it will be uh, important inside the nucleus. So this is how the nucleus export and import the material across itself for uh, for the proper functioning of the cells as some of the materials are required to be function inside the nucleus but it is synthesized out the nucleus and that is in cytoplasm as we know that maximum of the protein is synthesized either in over the endoplasmic reticulum or in the cytoplasm so there should be a proper channel between the nucleus and or the nucleoplast and the cytoplasm for the proper functioning of the cell so this was in my videos hope you have liked so uh, don't forget to like comment and share my channel and definitely don't forget to subscribe for more up uh, for more uh, such videos and if you want some specific uh, topic from me then don't forget to comment in my channel in the comment box so that I can update you with that Till then, goodbye, have a nice day and be yourself.